200 million years ago. Scorching lava, suffocating heat, and toxic gases violently push our planet to the brink. There will be no mercy for anyone. Will our planet survive? Or will it transform into a barren wasteland, devoid of life? The fate of Earth's future lies with a handful of primitive creatures. They must adapt or die. Witness how the Earth was strangled. On Animal Armageddon. Death is one of the things that nature wills. Marcus Aurelius Antoninus, 1st century AD. This is Mars today. Waterless, airless, lifeless. A harsh, unforgiving desert where nothing lives vastly different than Earth. The chilling reality is this could have been Earth if a mass extinction 200 million years ago had succeeded. It happened just before the reign of dinosaurs in a time called the Triassic. The world of the Triassic is dominated by humid jungle with lush forests and vast wooded plains stretching from pole to pole. The tropics of the Triassic would be like the tropics of today, but whereas in our world, as you go north or south from the equator, it gets cooler. Well, in the Triassic, it probably stayed warm because carbon dioxide levels, greenhouse gases were much higher. But I think the greatest difference would be the plants and the animals. A host of bizarre creatures roamed this planet. Flying reptiles. Giant armor-plated herbivores. And cunning predators lurking in the shadows. But most important to humans, our own tiny ancestors, the first true mammals. All of these animals inhabit a vast supercontinent called Pangaea, the place land dwellers have called home for tens of millions of years. The Triassic would have to have been one of the coolest crossroads of time to ever visit, I think. It really is the strange, peculiar intersection between what came before and what has become after. Planet Earth is still in recovery after the mother of all mass extinctions left it for dead. Fifty million years earlier, the Permian period ended tragically when the Earth split apart in Siberia, oozing toxic lava for a million years. Known as the Great Dying, this cataclysmic event turned a lush and thriving wonderland into a barren, hostile domain. More than 90% of all species were lost forever. But a few animals made it through, and from this meager handful of survivors, life has slowly but surely clawed its way back from the brink. After 50 million years, 
ecosystems have returned to something approaching normal. But beneath their feet, the forces that brought Pangaea together millions of years in the past are now splitting it apart. The Earth's crust floats on a layer of molten rock called the mantle. The flow of rock in the mantle moves the continents over time. As these forces tear Pangaea apart, an extraordinary amount of lava will be expelled from the bowels of the Earth. The gears of mass extinction are in motion. Disaster is about to strike. In what is now the Appalachian Mountains of eastern North America, a deep rumble shakes the landscape. A startled flock of Eudemorphodon takes flight. They sense that something is wrong. But there is nowhere to run from the enemy gathering below. These bird-like creatures are among the first flying reptiles, or pterosaurs. Pterosaurs were the first vertebrates to actually evolve powered flight. Going not just from high up in the trees to down on the ground, but actually the reverse, being able to go from the ground up. An elongated fourth finger forms the leading edge of their thin wings. To us, it might resemble a bat, but it flies as gracefully as a bird. It was, was somewhere about the size of a seagull. Uh, and it could probably glide and, and flap its wings and, and would benefit from having those rather long wings that a seagull has, meaning that it can take advantage of air currents to maintain it aloft. It doesn't have to flap furiously all the time like a hummingbird. And like a seagull, the Eudemorphodon use their gliding ability to patrol the waterways for food. They dine almost exclusively on fish. As the Eudemorphodon soar, another rumble. The Triassic world's grim fate is knocking at the door. Basking in the sun below, a group of Rutiodons take little notice that the end of the world is coming. Twelve feet long, armoured from head to tail, and equipped with large cone-shaped fangs, these Rutiodons are the top predators in the lakes and ponds of Pangaea. Rutiodon resembles a crocodile. Though they are not related to each other, scientists believe it occupied a similar niche in the ecosystem. An ambush predator that never strayed far from the water. I think most of the time Rudyodon was eating fish, just based on the shape of the skull. But given the opportunity, something's not paying attention when it comes down to drink some water at the, the riverside, uh, Rudyodon would probably be able to swipe at them and, and take them into the water and drown them probably. But the dominant animals of the Triassic are heavily armored herbivores like Desmatosuchus. With no predators big enough to take them down, they roam wherever they please. They can grow as big as a two-ton truck, and they're fortified against any potential attackers. Desmatosuchus has got this full-blown armor all over its back with these giant shields and these giant spikes that stick off over its shoulders. No doubt that this could have been a great offensive piece of weaponry at the time when some animal is attacking it. But Desmatosuchus' days of peacefully grazing are numbered. For weeks, all the animals of this place have ignored the mysterious rumblings and now they will pay the price. Towering plumes of searing vapor stream into the sky. 
These geezers are like Old Faithful, but a hundred times more powerful. Superheated steam and debris rocket over a mile into the air. And this is just the beginning. Rolling clouds of steam subsume the Eudemorphodon. The Desmatasuchus lead the way to higher ground. While Rutiodon seeks shelter in the deep. But there will be no escape. The steam eruptions are just a warning shot. Lava eruptions are not far behind. Pangaea is coming apart at the seams. Two hundred million years ago, the supercontinent of Pangaea began to split apart, ushering the world into a dark period of mass extinction. In what is now the eastern United States, huge eruptions of scalding hot steam have kicked off one of the largest volcanic events in Earth history brought on by the breakup of this landmass. The rifting is in the process of forming the Atlantic Ocean Basin, so scientists call the resulting volcanic eruptions CAMP, or the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province. The formation of the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province is one of the really important milestones in Earth history. It was a cornerstone, really, of the formation of what was to come afterwards. But it was also a gravestone. The formation of these caused this enormous mass extinction. Camp is the largest igneous province known in the solar system. And Camp itself covered four different continents. It spanned 11 million square kilometers, which is larger than the entirety of the United States. Weeks pass, and the steam eruptions in North America continue. One mother does her best to shield her young from the approach of Armageddon. This is Megazostrodon, our closest ancestor of this time. Its long jaws and rows of tiny sharp teeth suggest a reptilian origin, but it is covered in hair, not scales. Megazostrodon is the first true mammal. The future of the entire class of animals rests with it. Megazostrodon was quite a small creature. You've got to think of something like a weasel, I guess, quite long and thin. You might hardly have noticed it, like weasels today, it's quite secretive. And it's a pretty important survivor for us because it's the animal that is uh, related to modern mammals. Probably, like most small animals of that size, is a burrowing animal. Megazostrodon is well protected in its burrow. But those on the surface are not so lucky. The ground rumbles. Then, with an ear-splitting boom, the camp eruptions begin in earnest. Lava bursts out of huge cracks in the earth. Fountains of magma explode into the air. It's far more destructive than a typical volcano that explodes from a single mountaintop. These cracks can be dozens of miles long. A tidal wave of flame courses from the fissures. You have almost like a, a wave of...